EBS Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Leader. Outcast. That's all they see. I see. 13 years after the original, Avatar is back. The way of water connects all things. Before your birth. And after your death. This is our home! I need you with me. And I need you to be strong. Costing $250 million to make and in production for five years, Avatar The Way of Water is this year's big Christmas blockbuster. It's the second film in what's hoped to be a long franchise. Writer and director James Cameron has already shot the third movie and has hopes of doing at least another two. But is this instalment worth the money and the years that have gone into it? One thing is for sure though, with a running time of three hours and 12 minutes, you best make sure you nip to the loo before you watch and find out. Charlotte O'Sullivan is the chief film critic for The Evening Standard. Charlotte, without giving too much away, what is Avatar The Way of Water about? So it's over a decade since we last saw Jake and his lovely Navi partner, Natiri, and they've been living in the forest, blissful existence, and, and they've got children of their own now, and they've adopted some children. But then there's a new threat in the form of Jake's old enemy, Colonel Miles, and essentially the family go on the run and they end up at this island, this coral reef island, and they're taken in by the people there, and they're just lying low, hoping to just get on with their lives peacefully, but of course it's not that simple, and Colonel Miles is soon gunning for them, and for all the people in the area. So they've got Jake and Natiri have a new fight on their hands. Do you think it's worth the wait? I think so. It has been getting some very bad reviews, some one-star reviews, and there are a lot of problems with the plot. But as an experience, it's just phenomenal. You you know, the last few months, you feel so kind of frostbitten and you're plugged into your phone the whole time. Suddenly... You're in this world where creatures are getting their tails and fusing them with the coral reef and there are these incredible colours and textures and you feel like you're being plugged into something just big and beautiful and infinitely bright. And it's just, yeah, it's really, it's a really special experience. How does The Way of Water compare to the first Avatar film? It's really hard to compare them because in a way they have different flaws and they have different strengths. I love the first one. And I think the plot is just makes a lot more sense in the first one, because you have a corporation with government backing trying to colonize a planet. And that's, they they want to exploit the resources of Pandora. Well, Pandora's a moon. So they want to exploit the resources of this moon. And that's something we can all, identify with um it makes total sense in avatar 2 it's really it this time it's personal colonel miles just wants to get revenge on jake and yet he has all this you know all these weapons all these personnel alongside him and you're just thinking well why is this mission getting backing because it's just it's, it's a grudge match and so it just that just feels like a more flimsy setup but on the other hand, um, you have more time to explore the world. I mean, a lot more time. You, you must know that it's a, it's a very long running time. So that means that you just get to spend more time on Pandora and almost um, you can let go a bit more and, and just relax. New stars have been added to the cast. Who are some of the names in this movie? So Jake and Natiri have five children. Three of them are their own children and two are adopted. And the, the, the kids I like best were Kiri and Loak. So Kiri is actually the daughter of Dr. Grace, the Sigourney Weaver character in the first film. 
and I love Dr. Grace and Sigourney Weaver is just so brilliant. So it's a combination of Kiri being quite an interesting character. I don't want to give away um, any spoilers, but her character arc is, is interesting. And she's like a little bit sulky, a bit sensitive. She totally takes to the water. She's a real water baby. And Sigourney Weaver just gives her so much edge. Just the line readings are great. And the other interesting new character is Loak, who's the second son. And he has lots of issues. He feels he can't live up to his older brother. He's just more mischievous, gets into trouble, and is basically told off a lot by his dad. And so he's, you know, you're you're interested in what he's going through. And he forms a bond with this whale-like creature, um, this Tolkien. So I think they're the characters with the most going on. And I think especially teenage viewers are going to connect with them. Sadly, some of the other new characters are a bit more annoying. Took, she's the little girl. She's just so aggravating and cutesy. And Spider who's um, the, the one human child in the family. He's He was left behind on Pandora. Um, and he's played by Jack Champion, who cannot act. There's all these sort of amazing pixels in the film just taking you to these vast depths. But then you have this human actor who's like um, the equivalent of a puddle. Every time the, com- the camera cuts to him, you just sort of think, oh, no. Because he's like sort of Tarzan Jr. He's got a little loincloth and dreadlocks. And yes, there's just not a lot going on with Spider. So it's a mixed bag. But I think Kiri and Loak, you really, really want to know what they will do next. And, And so when we got to the end of the movie, they were the two that I was desperate to find out more about. Let's go to the ads. Stay there to hear more about Avatar and plans for the future films in the franchise. Welcome back. Charlotte, we've had a number of big blockbusters this year that made people actually want to go out and watch it on the big screen. Top Gun, for example, was hugely successful. Do you think this film will also bring people to the cinema? Definitely, already the advanced sales are breaking records and people aren't just trying to come for the first weekend. They want to come and have the best experience. So they're booking the cinemas with the biggest screens and the most comfortable, which makes sense if you're going to be in there for over three hours. You want ones with comfortable seats. I think people, especially who love the first Avatar, they know what they're looking for, which is a a sort of sensual experience and that's not something you can get that you're not going to wait and watch it on the tv you have to get out there it really makes a difference and it's something about experiencing it with other people you know yes people are going to the toilet a lot so you're experiencing them going oh, sorry sorry <laughs> so it, it is a test on the bladder but that's that kind of felt part of the fun you're just so connected to the people in the audience because you know you're seeing something that you just don't see every day. You watched the movie in 3D. What did you think of the movie embracing this as a feature? Could it help with the resurgence of these types of films? It's hard to know. So I I was wearing the 3D glasses. I didn't even notice they were on because I was so absorbed in what I was seeing on screen. I forgot I had the glasses on. Uh, In the past, if you're watching a film you know, that's not gripping, you just sort of think, why have I got these things on my face? It can be quite annoying. So, but I I, I just think it's sort of, it's about James Cameron and Pandora and Jake and Natiri. People are so bonded to this project and these characters that I think that's what would make them go for the 3D option. I don't think it's 3D per se. We know there's more sequels planned to this film. How many will there be and what do we know about them so far? So James Cameron said three is shot, which is great news. Like when you get to the end of this film, you honestly, that, that's all you want is to see the next one. It's like addictive. I don't know. He, he said that he's sent the scripts for four and five to the studio and that they were really pleased. But I do think Cameron... Um, does have a sort of hucksterish quality and he's very good at selling things and I'm not sure that we could 
take everything as gospel um, for what lies ahead. He obviously wants to make four and five. This film has to do, has to make, I can't remember what the figure is, but it's billions for, to um, turn a profit. So it's possible we won't see four and five, but as long as as long as I get my hands on three, I'll be happy. I just need to know what will happen with Kiri and Loak and Natiri. Natiri has this great scene. This character, she's just growing. Um, and I just think she has the potential to be one of the best female characters in cinema, like Sigourney Weaver's Ripley. You just feel that something's taking shape, which is very exciting. And that's it from The Leader. You can read more film reviews from Charlotte at standard.co.uk and tune into our Tech and Science Daily podcast next week for a special look at the visual effects used in Avatar The Way of Water. This podcast is back on Monday at 4pm.